Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Brianna and here on my channel we don't always necessarily fix things but we do make them less broken. So today is wallpaper day. My husband and I are going to be removing all the wallpaper, that fugly wallpaper, in the downstairs um, second family room, living room, whatever you want to call it. Right now we're about to head out and go to Home Depot to get some supplies to help us uh, do the job because something that we're also going to do is prep it for paint. And Something that we recently discovered is that underneath that horrible wallpaper, because we already started taking some off, is um, yeah, is that horrible wood paneling that you see in old houses sometimes, but for some reason it's been painted yellow. And because of the paneling, there's grooves in it, so um, there's steps that we need to take to uh, kind of smooth out the wall to prep it for painting. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'll see you guys at Home Depot. So we're back at home. We've actually been back at home for a little bit at this point. As you can see, I took out all outlet covers, light switches and everything to uh, get ready for peeling off the wallpaper. And that's exactly what you see us doing right now. So this wallpaper kind of came off in two steps. The first step was the easiest step. And the first step involved us peeling off the ugly, um, I guess, top decorative layer. As you can see, it comes off pretty easily. We were just peeling it off with our hands. We didn't need any tools or anything like that. And what you see left behind is actually, I guess I would call it like the adhesive layer. And that's the layer that we're going to need to use the crud cutter for. Now you will see, and um, as the video goes on, we actually at some point run out of crud cutter and we just start using water. And water actually works just as good as the crud cutter. Once we ran out of crud cutter, we just filled up the bottles with water, shook it up, and it was and it worked just fine. Like I said, what you see us doing right now is peeling off the top layer of the wallpaper and then what's being left behind is the adhesive and that's the part that's gonna need to get sprayed and scraped off. So here's something that kind of came up after we had already started uh, taking off the wallpaper. The previous owners or, you know, whoever made over this room put trim like everywhere, like in every corner. No idea how long it's been there, but the trim was very old. Um, it was kind of an eyesore and we also just found it unnecessary. You will come to see that we will end up putting trim um, on the ceilings, but all of the trim at the corners, I mean, there's trim like in other kind of random, like in a random corner on the other side of the room, we removed all of that after we removed it we see why they did it because there were kind of like there were gaps in between the wood paneling but we were able to cover those gaps up with some joint tape and some joint compound but we did not like all the trim um so we did end up taking it off so that's what you see me doing here Get it? Nope. Well, you're upsetting Zeus. 
Took off the molding on this wall, like I did on the other side, and these little uh, finishing nails are sticking out directly like from the corner, and they're too narrow to hammer in, and too narrow for me to pull out with the other side of the hammer. So I got some pliers, and we're pulling them out. But I needed my husband's, <laughs> my husband's big man muscles to help me. Muscles! <laughs> Did you get it? Nope. God damn. For everybody watching, you need to scream to ensure maximum strength coverage. <laughs> it's coming out, man. <sighs> All right. You got it? No, oh. I, bro I broke it though. You People, if you cannot pull it out, you must break. <laughs> the name of my channel is Make It Less Broken, though. Nah, son. And you made it more broken. You break. Okay. You must break. You must break. Ah! Did you get it? You must break. Did you break that one too? Yeah. Oh God. I think I see one more. Oh shit. Ah! There you go. All right. Thanks, babe. All right, we're all done. All this fugly ass wallpaper is done. Is... No, all we have is fugly ass paint. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the walls underneath was painted yellow. I don't, I wonder if maybe they did that to like, cause the wallpaper they used was kind of yellow. And then like, you know, this brand brown paneling is obviously like dark brown. So maybe they painted it yellow so that it would like, the brown wouldn't like poke through too much. I don't know. That doesn't even, why would, I don't know. I'm trying to rationalize this, I don't know. But the wallpaper is down and uh, molding's off here, molding's off here. Last thing we're gonna do, well, last thing I'm gonna do right now is there's just this weird molding here on these corners. I think it's two pieces actually. Yeah, so I'm about to get a screwdriver and a hammer and get that molding off. And then we also plan on taking off all the molding really, like on the ceiling. What time is it? It's about to be five o'clock. We'll see how we feel after we, uh, you know, get the get that trim off. See how I feel about uh, continuing to prep for paint. I'll let you guys know. But wallpaper's down. And it is now the following day, and what you see us doing right now is preparing the surface for paint by uh, sanding it. But looking back, I don't think um, I don't think that this step was uh, necessary because really the next thing we had to do was, if you can see those grooves, those grooves in the wall are from that wood paneling I was telling you guys about. Again, it's for some reason been painted yellow. So really we didn't need to sand. Um, luckily we did not spend too much time on this step, but it's just something that I'm just kind of noticing in hindsight. We're just kind of uh, scuff sanding the walls, but really the next major step is using joint compound to fill in the grooves and this it actually was a multiple day process because a joint compound has to dry and then you have to sand it down and then you have to um, kind of rebuild it because there's very oftentimes air bubbles that have to be refilled in and such. And right here, what you see me doing is taking down the crown molding on the very top. It came off pretty easy. It was clearly not in there. Very sturdy. Okay, so now we are getting our all-purpose joint compound prepared. We've got putty knives, we're mixing it up, and all we're about to do is then head back to the wall and start filling in those grooves using the joint compound. So what you see Ace doing right now is he's actually using mesh drywall tape, and this, this kind of was a failed plan. <laughs> so the crown molding, we went ahead and removed all the crown molding because it was old and we just didn't um, care for the style of it. And the plan was to use drywall tape, joint compound and um, joint tape to kind of fill in the gaps. I looked it up online, I did some research and that's the best way to go about filling up any gaps between the ceiling and the wall. However, this actually turned out to, I mean, it's not gonna, 
I'm not, it's not, you're not going to see it here. But as we try to continue to do this throughout the, our work on the room, it actually, we actually eventually realized it just wasn't going to work. So, um, we ended up like ripping off all of the tape that we did uh, adhere to the ceiling, but that's what Ace is doing right now. Uh, because what we're going to do is fill it in with joint compound, let it dry, and then you re-sand it. And then you basically repeat until, um, it's thick enough and built up enough to be able to paint over. It just became more work and it just kind of became apparent that it was just not going to work because there were some places where we were using so much joint pound that it actually started to crack as it dried. We were able to use joint tape and joint compound on the um, vertical corners where the walls intersected and we're going to, and we're able to use joint compound and drywall tape to fill them in efficiently to paint over them. But on the ceilings, we ended up just deciding that we were just going to replace the molding. However, what you're seeing right now is a display of us making a mistake in action and wasting product. <laughs> And welcome to another day of work. So the part that I skipped filming that you guys did not see was you may notice that there's a this patch of gray on this on the wall over here. That is the same color gray as all the rest of our walls. This is the color that we plan on painting the room. I don't know if I ever said that at any point in this video. Oh my God, I'm sorry if I didn't. <laughs> so what we've done is uh, using our joint compound, we filled in all the grooves on this one wall. We And we were kind of doing this project in sections. We wanted to test things out. We never done this before, so we were starting small so we started with this wall we filled in grooves with compound let it dry sand it down and then some grooves needed to be refilled and then we kind of painted that section as like the tester section and then after we painted it we realized there were some spaces that we didn't sand down far enough so that's what i just got done doing there but it did let us know it did give us an idea for how to go about sanding down the rest of the room and it let us know how much we needed to sand down to uh, get the wall as smooth as possible to prep it for paint so that's what's going on here right now and after this wall is a uh, thoroughly wiped down and there's we're confident that there's no more residue from sanding down the compound we're gonna start painting So painting is going along smoothly, as you can tell. I don't know if you can, I guess you can kind of tell actually from the on camera there, all of the walls are going to need two coats of paint. You can actually kind of see that it's almost a little bit see-through from just one coat and there's a little bit of the yellow and the uh, kind of the grooves from the joint compounds still popping through a little bit. These walls will require uh, two coats of paint and two coats does the job perfectly. But uh, yeah, just noting that here. But also something else I wanna mention is you see that spot toward the top of the ceiling toward the right of my head. I'll zoom in on it for you. I don't know what exactly it was, but after we applied the joint compound and started sanding down, the wood paneling that was underneath started to warp almost as if it absorbed water and i wonder if maybe the wetness from the joint compound is what did it or maybe it had to have already been wet before previously and maybe the joint compound was what i don't know kind of the straw that broke the camel's back so we applied compounds and sanded down but we actually couldn't we couldn't just paint over it because it was warped and the paint would uh it was the joint compound was already starting to chip and it would just be very unsightly so what we're going to end up doing if i honestly this job took so long i don't know i don't even remember if i filmed this we're going going to just get a utility knife and cut out that section of the wall and then we're going to replace it with um, kind of the mesh patch repair that you would use to repair a hole in regular drywall and that does end up working. We do have another portion of the wall where the same thing happened and we did the same thing to fix it and it works pretty well in the end.
I don't know how long it's been at this point. I think it's probably been at least two or three months. The projects that you think are gonna be like, oh, this is just gonna be a quick weekend project. It seems like those are the ones that always take the longest. Hmm. All right, well, here I am and uh, I'm finishing this room today. That's what I'm doing. It's what I'm determined to do. It's what's going to happen. This is all I have left. It's partially painted in the corner there because we were kind of running out of paint and we just were using every last bit of paint that we had. A lot's changed since then. Um, you might see more crap in here. That's just other stuff that I've gathered from Facebook Marketplace for other projects that um, I'm planning on doing. I don't want to talk anymore. I want to just get this damn wall done. And also this is going to be kind of fun for me because right now at the time that I'm filming this, my husband is actually away for work and he'll be back in a few days. So I want to finish this before he gets back. It's kind of like a surprise for him, even though I told him I was going to do it. Um, but yeah, it'll just be, it'll be nice for it to finally be done. I have my shower cap on because things get messy and I just washed my hair yesterday. And I'm going to get gloves, mask, eye protection, and then we're just gonna get started, so let's go. FYI, we have since purchased a Ryobi Orbital Sander. We actually already have one, but it's it's very old. I've had it for a few years and you know, it's pretty worn down. So we decided to get a new one and oh my God, is this thing a game changer? Um, I will link it below, but we got ours from Home Depot. Would absolutely recommend if you have any projects that require heavy sanding. Okay, so I'm now done with sanding. Thanks to the electric sander, it took minutes, maybe probably not even 10 minutes, I don't think. So I'm just doing the best I can to get cleaned up before I bring the paint out. This is just a hack that I wanted to share. I wish so, so badly I could remember the Instagram page. I saw it on, but I just can't. I just tried to look through my phone because I thought I saved it, but I can't find it. And it's pretty much just putting your paint tray inside the shopping bag and then pouring the paint in the back. As you can see, it took me a couple of tries to, uh, to figure out which direction I wanted the bag to go, but we got it eventually. It keeps the paint tray clean. It makes cleanup about a thousand times easier. I don't know about any of you watching this, but painting is not the difficult part. The hard part, as outside of prepping for painting is freaking cleanup. And this was honestly a game changing hack. I wish so badly I could remember the Instagram page I found it on because I just really don't. So I have finished my section of the wall. It is officially done. But what I'm doing now, since I have the paint out, is I'm giving all of the areas of the wall that need a second coat of paint that second coat. And this is a section that needs another coat. So um, that's all I'm doing. And just like that, we are finally done. And oh, that little black puppy there was our foster puppy. Her name is Stormy. She has since been adopted. The room is finally done and I cannot even tell you how happy I am to finally be done with it. This was a very messy project. Really, this could have been done probably over the course of maybe two or three weekends, but because of the amount of work it took, my husband and I just procrastinated and procrastinated and it ended up taking like, probably four or five months. Like we started it shortly after we moved into our house. So I, I wanna say November and it finally, everything finally got done in, um, this is March now that uh, I'm filming this last bit. Now there are some areas of the wall where you can see, uh, I, I guess we didn't probably didn't sand quite enough, didn't put enough joint compound 
on there and you can see a little bit of ridges on the wall in some places and then also remember our those areas at the top of the wall where the wood paneling was warping like i said we we're gonna do we use the mesh to replace it and it turned out great and the area that i'm pointing at right now that's closest to the fireplace i actually didn't give that area a second coat and that's actually because we're planning on putting built-ins on either side of the fireplace but and also that's why i didn't paint around that cable thing there but yeah it's done it's done and we're finally finished and as i'm talking right now i'll put in some before photos so you guys can um see what it looked like before because i'm sure you probably forgot if you made it to this point i really appreciate it thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video like if you want to see more content like this hit the subscribe button I, I promise i'll start posting more consistently i do have a couple uh backlogged videos that i haven't even started editing yet so uh yeah thank you again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye